Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you all how I made this pendant. Or rather this style of pendant. This one's the prototype and we're going to be making one kind of based off of it. But let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, so we're going to be wrapping a groovy cab today, but this wrap can also be done um, the kind of top finishing. If you follow along with any style of wire wrapping tutorial that has that where you have three or four wires bound by half round together and it's wrapping around, you know, kind of bringing up and then you end up with all these wires at the top, I I'm sure this could be adapted for that style of wrap as well and if you guys are interested in that let me know down in the comments and uh i'll do a tutorial you know one of our upcoming tutorials might be on just that very thing so to get started i am using one of the cabs that we sell on our website this one's a beautiful labradorite let me get a closer look for you guys you can see it's got such just a beautiful flash in it and I've already added a groove. Any of the cabs on our website that are eligible have an option to where you can have a groove added and then we even have some that are pre-grooved and that goes for our gemstones as well as our fused glass. Uh, I recommend the thickest wire that you can get away with up to like an 18 or 16 gauge that will still fit your beads on it. And here I have some like 1.5 millimeter or 2 millimeter, I can't remember, but we have some small, medium, and large beads. The medium are 3 millimeter and the large are 4 millimeter and I did get those on Amazon. There will be links down uh, to all the tools and materials actually down in the video description below. And I'm going to be using about, oh, 30 inches, 30 to 36 inches of wire. And here I am using some 20 gauge pair wire brand wire. And I really like the vintage bronze color. But this one over here I did in their titanium tone that they carry. So really the color of the wire is entirely up to you. The technique remains the same. As far as tools that I'm using, we have our round nose pliers, flush cutters, bent nose pliers, and a mandrel, or you could be using like a pen or a knitting needle or something. So I'm going to first decide which part of the stone I want to have. Okay, I think I'm going to do this one. Gosh, it's pretty both ways. I'm such a sucker for tip down. Let's do tip down. <laughs> so to do that, like, and just to demonstrate, if we were doing this on a round stone or on the rounded end, I would just put that into the center of our wire and then shape the wire around it. But whenever we have a point on our stone, I'm going to use my, the flat section, flat-ish section of my bent nose pliers and do a little 90 degree bend. And I'm going to sharpen that up on both sides so that we have a nice little right angle like that and that is going to be where I nestle in the tip of my stone and then just train that wire up the groove 20 gauge nestles very comfortably into the grooves on these stones while the 18 gauge kind of sits a little on top of but both work really well and from here I'm going to make sure that my center is lined up and I've just grabbed and done one twist like a little twist tie and then I'm going to twist again because those two twists will act to stabilize and then I'm going to come in with my bent nose pliers and hold on to this right where the oh let's see if we can make this be a little more zoomed in without becoming without it being detrimental um, but I'm just going to hold right where the twists began and then I'm going to deepen that twist making sure that the wire is actually nestling into the stone and this is more or less the way that I start all of my groovy wraps I don't want to cinch too much because the wire as soft as it is uh, may actually start to cut through itself so and I'm going to do a few more twists just building away from what we were doing there we go until we have about half an inch of twisting happening there and then i'm going to make both of these wires go off 
in that direction. And then I'm going to use my mandrel on not the, what is that, six millimeter, but like the seven millimeter section, I guess. And I'm placing the mandrel or pen or knitting needle right where the twists stopped and then just folding it over and off to the right. Now, you could have this go on either side, right or left. It's just I, being right-handed, that's kind of what I do. And then I'm going to twist this down like a spiral staircase descending until we come boop, to the front there. And now this is very nice. Oh, I've really mixed all these beads together, haven't I? I didn't even notice that that was happening. Oh, goodness. Well, that's for future fun to deal with. <laughs> there we go. So now we have our bail has been constructed. There's no wiggling of our stone. And we're going to do what I call an itsy bitsy spiral. So I've put my fingertips together and just twisting them like the itsy bitsy spider climbs up the water spout but this time it's with wire so we could actually take a piece of scrap wire and hold it end and end in our fingers like this and then bring our fingertips together and holding firmly onto the wire we will just whoop. and you can see that has made a little loop and if we reposition our hands and then do it again it starts to make a really nice little spiral that we can then grip and just train that loose end around and really make a nice inline spiral. Now, I've covered this in other tutorials, but I don't want to presume that y'all have watched other videos of ours, so that's why I repeat myself quite a bit, but, you know, nothing uh, is good practice like repetition. <laughs> so, um, an inline spiral is like we did the spiral in line of the wire, not starting at one of the tips. So, having practiced that with some scrap wire, I'm going to hold on to my bail and onto my wires, and I'm still placing my fingers and then just twisting around. You may need to get some weirdness going on with your hand positioning to be able to accommodate when you're moving past the stone and stuff, but the concept is still the same, and we can start making a nice little... You don't even have to use your first finger. Here, I'm doing it with my thumb. And you can just make a nice little whoop, vortex -y spiral. You can see my two wires kind of split apart from each other, but I really like that. And so what I'm doing from here is I'm just bringing that up, this is a little bit of a nice like asymmetrical um, wrap, so I'm going to leave that off to one side, but you can make the choice to have it centered or offset even more, or it's really just whatever you like. And then I'm going to wrap around and then to the front, and I'm going to wrap using about two feet of 26 gauge wire I'm going to wrap around this bottommost 20 gauge wire and so to do that I am just gripping and coil 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 smoosh <laughs> and we can even just coil down that little bit of a tail and smoosh it. I really like to use my bent nose pliers to um, really tuck that tail down. There's no sense in wasting any wire. Though pair wire is so affordable, it's not the end of the world if you like, you know, snip a centimeter off, but waste not, want not. And I'm just going to hold on to that little bit of coiling to continue around. So I'm going to make the coil the entire length off camera and I'll meet you guys right back here. Okay so we have gotten down to the tail of the wire and again I'm just going to use my bent nose pliers to cinch that down and I like to especially on the thinner like on the 18 and 16 gauge core wires that might not be as necessary but on the 20 gauge I find it really is to just hold on to it with my um, pliers that way I can get a good grip and move that down the length of our wire without you can see I started getting kind of like bent up and weird and so that I always like to give myself a bit more core wire than what I need that way I can have 
the bit at the end that gets all wonky from me coiling on it and like squeezing it too hard and stuff but then I can move it upstream to where it is still nice and smooth. Just a way of, you know, uh, even after all this time with wire wrapping, it's still difficult for me to keep my core wires tidy. So uh, it's just a little trick for making it look, the end result to look tidy. <laughs> so from here, I am going to We can kind of decide how we want this to go down and I'm just gonna bring this around and I'm shaping it to give it a little bit of space because we are going to be tucking and adding some other wires as we go quite possibly um, so that would be cool and so we've wrapped it and I've bent it around the back and now I'm going to actually thread up and through right there if you can see into that space that was made, almost like we're tying a knot with the wire. And then I'm just gonna train that up in that direction and we'll leave that be for now. And now I'm going to use our, just our 20 gauge bear just by itself. And I'm going to cinch and shape that around. And again, I am going to take this and I'm going to feed it up and through and have it finish off right next to where our other wire exited. So now from here, this bare 20 gauge that we've brought through, I'm going to wrap around just to kind of cinch and I'm feeding it back through that little hole because this is where I would like, I'm gonna grab with my pliers and really just tug the heck out of it make sure it's like cinched it down but this is where I would like for it to look like my beads are growing out of so I'm going to thread on a four millimeter bead a three millimeter bead and then a couple of these little they're either one and a half or two millimeter I cannot recall and I don't have the little tag, which is unlike me. Normally I stick the tag in you know, with the item description and item number into the bin with them. But I don't know, maybe I got these from like, from somewhere that didn't have a tag. So not all of them fit onto the wire. Some of them are a little too small, but that's okay. I'll just... In today's episode of Will It Fit? I'll just try it on and if it doesn't I set it off to the side and move on to the next bead. That must have been what would happen is I mixed brands, two different brands of beads so even though it said they were the same size clearly they were not. <laughs> but that's okay. There we go that one fits. And I'm trying to just make sure that I have enough beads that whenever we shape this wire around, the beads kind of go all the way to like the back side. So I'm going to try to fit on a couple more. And if you run out of beads or you don't want any beads hidden on the back side, you could use a crimp bead to crimp, to like kind of put on and then crimp onto the metal. Or you could use just another little bit of the 26 gauge wire. Like I'm going to pull off about five inches. And I'm just going to... Coil some and give it a smush and then we can actually just trim off those ends and cinch them with our pliers and the reason I cinch them down is I, I, I have very sensitive skin and I don't want any metal scratching it but also this piece is likely going to go into our 
um, holiday sale that we have at the end of every year and it whoever buys it I want to make sure that it doesn't you know irritate their skin or tangle in like whatever they're wearing if they're wearing like a loose knit sweater or something like it's just I think good practice to uh, make it make your jewelry as least pokey as possible <laughs> so I'm gonna just come around and I want to follow the lines of the wires that came before Oops, sorry, I keep hitting the tripod. Do not mean to, but here we are. And I'm just going to kind of tighten that in. And now from here, we can kind of decide, hmm, what are we going to do? So I may want to, I could fit something down through there. Like, I think it'd look pretty neat to have this. Oh, we could just coil that off to the side and towards the back. I think that adds some nice depth to it. Okay. So from there, I'm just going to bring the wire through, again, that same hole that we had made. And then we can cinch that in a little bit. And... Then just bind those wires down by just vining them around. And then I'm going to give that one a snip so that it ends kind of right in the middle of the bale so that we can tuck it and it's not going to be in a position where it could snag skin or clothing. So you kind of see it ended right in there. So with this wire, I'm going to go a little bit more slowly so hopefully you can see. I'm just nestling it in, in between the other wires, and then I'm just bringing it through the center of the bale, and then pulling it down. And from here, we could actually use this wire to just coil, and I'm going to actually vine around the bale a little bit. If you want something more interesting going on than just those two simple wires. And I'm doing a loose corkscrew of a vine too because this wire is getting increasingly work hardened as we do this. And so I kind of want to be quick about it. And so there's one layer of vining. And I'm going to do a little itsy bitsy spiral down at the tip where it kind of meets up with the rest of the pendant before backtracking it and vining back up. Let me see if zooming in might not be helpful. So that's for that itsy bitsy spiral that we did. I'm actually going to give it a smush. There we are. And now that wire is coming and landing in between. The other lengths of wire. Sorry, I don't mean to wander out of frame. There we go. And then, and again, you can see that the wires become much more difficult to work with, but it's still possible. And then one last little flip. And then I'm going to give that a snip. That's the wire we just snipped, and now I'm going to give it a smush. Again, making sure that I'm ending it on the inner bale side. And that is a kind of fancy wrapped groovy pendant. Very sleek along the sides, just a nice little bit of wrapping up at the top. I like it. 
so this is how the front looks and just so that y'all can see a little better the back's a little messier than I would have liked and I want to show you on this one there was a difference that happened that I didn't intend where this spiral and that spiral were going in opposite directions. So you can get some interesting variations on this by mixing up when and where you're adding beads. But yeah, whenever you have all the spirals going in the same direction, you end up with a slightly tidier back. But more practice, I think, will get me where I'm going with this and I, I really look forward to seeing what y'all make because y'all are so crafty and talented it's just y'all constantly blow me away so be sure to uh, tag us on instagram or share it to our facebook wall uh links to those places are down in the video description that way we can see what you're up to Thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. I really hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, you can support our channel by just watching and being you, but you can also tickle our like button or subscribe if you're into that. Also, uh, if you want to make sure that you don't miss anything, as well as get exclusive coupons and uh, newsletters and different things like that, be sure to sign up for our newsletter at Back to Earth 3 backtoearthcreations.com. Uh, you can sign up for our newsletter there. It's free and you'll get notifications emailed to you every time we have a new shop update. We have new tutorials or a live stream. We also have our craft along club if you're interested in getting monthly kits or our behind the scenes content or like any art. All this stuff's down in the video description you guys. So if you're interested it's down there. You can always hit us up if you have any questions and until next time y'all happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>